Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. B. Jagadish Singh, a third of computer science of PPJN College. On behalf of computer science department, I invite all the participants and our uh, today's webinar speaker, Mr. Sinivas Raghavan, on the topic of artificial intelligence revolution. My sincere thanks to our management principal, Professor Chaj, for giving the opportunity to conduct the webinar in the sequence way. This is the 10th webinar of the during the COVID-19 lockdown period. Now, I invite Professor Dujja Sitar to give the intro to the speaker of this webinar. Dujja, madam, please. Thank you, sir. Um, good evening, everyone. It's a great honor for me to introduce our resource person, Mr. Srinivas Raghavan, research and developer and a renowned professional trainer, now working as head and R&D department, Smart and Technology Private Limited. Also, he had worked as product developer for Auto Intelli Systems Private Limited and as a technical trainer for 3G Institute of Research and Policy Studies, IIT Madras Research Park. I uh, would like to mention few of his outstanding projects uh, industrial robot cell development, car safety vision system, ultimate bird cell, internal vehicle tracking in industry, R&D of robotic chases, smart water tap, and many more. His specializations are in trending fields like artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, Arduino and robotics, IoT platforms, and robot studio simulation. So today we are privileged to have an opportunity to listen to you, sir. On behalf of all here, I uh, would like to welcome you once again. I uh, hope all the participants will be having a very nice time, very informative session today. Stay safe and take care. Request Mr. Srinivas Raghavan, sir, to take over the session. Thank you. Sir, over to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope I'm audible. If I'm audible, kindly type PS in the chat box. All right, looks like I'm audible. Thank you so much. We welcome you all and a very good evening to you ladies and gentlemen. Let's go through the session. But before that, let's see what the session is about. Let me play a short introductory video and we can start with the session. And there you go. India 2020. As the vision India 2020 to transform India into a developed nation. We build on our strength, not on the weakness. The India should become a developed nation, economically developed, prosperous, happy, safe nation. Welcome to the biggest AI webinar series. Do we remember Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam sir's 2020 vision? On, on behalf of that, what we are doing is we are going to train 1 lakh students on artificial intelligence and we've already crossed around 10,000, 15,000 students on that and we are still proceeding. Now let's have a small countdown and begin with the session. Thank you so much, everybody. Once again, welcome to AI Thorn, the artificial intelligence webinar series that is biggest so far. All right, I believe my screen is going to be visible to you all. And a gentle request, kindly press the pin option so that you can see my screen always. Okay, before we start the session, let me give you uh, a few tips. We are going to play two games. The first one is Treasure Hunt. Yes, all of us are going to play this game. Basically, what is Treasure Hunt? We are going to have uh, a small chest containing gold. If you have seen a treasure box containing gold anywhere in the PowerPoint presentation, all you're going to do is you're going to type found it 
in the chat box okay in one of the slides in the upcoming presentation there is going to be a small box with lots of gold in it if you find the box all you need to do is go to the chat box and type found it so the first person who types found it is going to be the winner for that game and he's going to receive an award a prize all right let us get it let us get started immediately artificial intelligence have you seen this movie yes it is the terminator one of the most accurate representations of artificial intelligence so if you need to get uh, a proper insight on what it is watch terminator and they have done a very good job even here if you see we have bike over here and that bike is hidden by the other bikes on the front it is called as occlusion it is hidden even though the machine is able to spot what kind of bike it is how it looks it finishes the rest of the portion then this is not a person it's a machine it is viewing like this so it is identifying which bike will be suitable to it for its physique which bike it can take and go that is one of the most accurate representations of okay sir okay back on track now we have a lot of misconceptions about what is ai what is machine learning what is deep learning let us clear that out in this session first ai is a very big and a wide scope of so many topics in it but within ai there are a few branches that is machine learning natural language processing expert systems speech vision planning and robotics basically many people think that ai is different machine learning is different but actually machine learning comes in under artificial intelligence then deep learning is a part of machine learning all these three are not different so let us clear that out first so we have ai machine learning with that we have deep learning unsupervised and supervised we're going to see that in detail shortly next coming to the language processing that is natural language processing what is basically natural language processing for that we need to know what is la natural language whatever we speak is natural language whatever we speak whatever we type that is natural language processing for example when you are typing your gmail or probably even your phone mobile keyboard when you are typing a message it is able to predict the next word how is that done have you ever thought of it did we know that our phones run ai yes it surely does what are you typing the machine understands the context of it then it gives the next word it predicts it so that is natural language processing and not only that if you had used any uh, you know google assistant siri alexa and what not we got so many virtual assistants all of them they also have natural language processing with speech you know what they do basically when we talk something uh, let's say hey google how is the weather now what they do is they first get the audio they get the audio that is first step second step remove the noises we have so much of background noise fan noise somebody might be honking in the road uh, and uh, you know Uh, there will be so much of uh, digital noises. All of that will be removed. Then the third step, okay, we we identify the audio clip. We got the noise removed, and the third step is to identify the phonetics. What do you mean by phonetics? When you say the word cat, when we we can split it into three phonetics. That is ka, a, and t. When you put them together, we get cat. so the next step is to identify the phonetics and gather them after you have got, gathered the phonetics the next step is to group them together so we have so many for phonetics ka a t we have to find the right phonetics and group them together so when we do that we will get back our words so ka a t is cat like that we'll get so many words therefore we got our sentence now the nlp comes in 
it understands the context of the sentence hey google find out uh, how is the weather now it understands that it needs to see the weather so therefore it will go search for weather status then it will come back to us and it will respond with appropriate uh, response so this is one of the most commonly used uh, ai in our daily lives next we have something called as expert systems they are nothing but decision makers if this happens then what should i do if that happens what should i do what ai expert system you are telling if else is it if else mm, basically yes it is a little bit of advanced if else it will have so many conditions and if these occurs this kind of output should be given and so on if this machine fails in the industry what can we do what are the other alternatives you can get a machine replacement or you can uh, stop the whole production and uh, fix that same machine like that it will have a set of rules so if something happens it will tell us what to do next so expert system is basically one of the low levels of ai it does not have an extremely high intelligence basically it guides us on what to do next if something happens so basically it's like an if else next we saw how we convert speech to text and text to speech the exact reverse order we have the sentence then break it up into words the words needs to be broken up into phonetics and then it can be set out that's all and then vision that is what is from terminator majorly if you see over here what is it doing it is identifying the bike that is called as image recognition and if some kind of ai is running behind a camera it is not just the camera recording any video but when the live webcam input is being processed by some kind of ai looking for some things for recognizing or identifying that is called as machine vision basically a camera with some kind of artificial intelligence behind it then planning not much to talk about and robotics all of these are kind of integrated in robot Shrini, can you just unmute yourself, Shrini? Just unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, I hope my screen is visible. I don't know when I got muted. Fine. Uh, can I? Did we see the slide, sir? Do you remember? Ladies and gentlemen, which slide should I proceed on? Yes, this is okay. by AI now. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you so much, everybody. Fine. So why AI now? The concept was kind of uh, invented or discovered in 1852. If I'm right, all these years, why didn't we? Uh, why why wasn't the AI technologies developed? But right now, can you answer in the chat box if you know? We'll wait for a few seconds. Oh, slide is not visible. Let me represent. But meanwhile, you can uh, tell. why ai is blooming right now but not before anybody knows the reason anybody wants to guess the answer wow okay so use the chat box to answer the question okay due to lack of hardware okay rahul that's great uh, due to lack of hardware we do not have such powerful processing power back then Okay, industry four point four, four point zero. All right, we have certain examples. Many are thinking right now. Okay, let me give you the two major reasons. One was right as lightly said, hardware. We did not have computation power back then. Do you know what? 
uh, five MB hard disk was so big it was kind of uh, you know half the size of a room. Then computers used to be made up of something called as transistor tubes. Sorry, uh, I mean the computers were kind of made up of using vacuum tubes. You can kind of just Google how the vacuum tubes look, how big they are, how much space they occupy, and so on. Somebody needs to Okay. First reason is computation power, and the second reason is even if we have so much of computation power, what are we going to compute? We need lots of data, right? So, right now, for every 60 seconds, we have so much of data created 1820 TB of data created. Did you know this? In YouTube, for every minute, every minute in YouTube, all over the world, people are uploading. 500 hours of footage in average. Yes, that is right. For every minute, people are uploading 500 hours of footage. So then imagine how much of data is emerging and how much of computational power we need to run all of this. OK. We saw a glimpse of what is AI. Before we proceed into machine learning, let's watch a small video so that we'll have a better insight of what is AI. All right, there you go. I am AI. Accelerating your discoveries to solve the great challenges of our time. I am a visionary. Bringing characters to life with more natural movement generating brilliant new worlds for them to explore and inventing new ways to bring out the creative genius of us all. I am a protector, leading the way into the most dangerous environments and searching for signs of life. I am a guardian, listening for the sounds of destruction to save our forests, and using satellites to bring freedom to those who are enslaved. I am a navigator, finding safer paths for cross-country deliveries, and taking personal travel to new heights. I am a scientist, exploring oceans of data to understand extreme weather patterns, and studying the building blocks of life to save a community from hunger. I am a healer, giving hope to those who suffer from the most challenging diseases. into the brain to rejuvenate paralyzed limbs. I am even the composer of the music you're hearing. I am AI, brought to life by NVIDIA, deep learning, and brilliant minds everywhere. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, can you just type in your chat box which was your favorite application so far in this video? Can you let all of us know which was your favorite application from this video? Okay, Darshini says Navigator.
All right, music. Professor Bharat says it's music. Yes, it is my favorite too. Scientist, healer, music and medicine, protector. Games. Wow, wow. Okay, good, good, good. Very well. Nice. Now, did you know that NVIDIA is a graphics card company? Then what is it doing with AI? Why is it developing so many applications? What is the link between graphics card and artificial intelligence? Keep this in mind. We're going to take a look at this after a while. All right, now getting back into our presentation. Okay, coming to machine learning. Basically, machine learning is something that needs to do some kind of task based on previous experience, but to totally improve its performance P. This is what is machine learning. It needs to do some task, but how will it do? It needs some kind of previous experiences. And not only that, the quality of the task is important and therefore we always need to, uh, we always need to improve its performance. So what kind of stuffs can we do with machine learning? Sound, what is sound? It is nothing but some kind of waves. What are waves? It has amplitude and frequency. Again, numbers. Then NLP, of course, numbers again. Image, all the pixel values. Let me show you an image. Okay, this image, do you see? It's a number four that is written by hand. The actual pixel value looks like this for the same number four. This number four in its uh, proper form. So this number is basically this image. All right, image is also a number. And basically any data, any data that is in your computer is basically numbers. When you get hold of, when you get hold of those numbers, we can train a machine learning application. So what is computer vision? Like we said, it is just a camera with a brain behind it an artificial intelligence behind it. Now let us see some of the applications. How many of you have used Google Lens? Anybody? Okay, so basically what Google Lens is, it is an app in your phone. Yes, you can download Google Lens from Play Store and you can use it. If you download Google Lens, when you open it, a camera opens up. Yes, when you point that camera to some kind of object, let's say a shoe, it is going to recognize that it is, a, it is a shoe. Not only that, it can recognize what shoe it is. There are different types of shoes, right? Boots, uh, sneakers, sports shoes, and so on. You can recognize what type it is. It doesn't stop with that. It even tries to recognize the brands. Is it Nike? Is it Puma? Is it Reebok? Is it Woodlands? It tries to recognize even that. And it just doesn't stop with that even. After recognizing, it goes to the internet. It searches for similar products. It, search in, it searches in Amazon, Flipkart, and all the online major stores. And it will show us with just pointing the camera at an object, it is going to recognize so many things and it is going to give us the shopping links. It is that good. Now, uh, okay, let's come in this order. Do you know what car is this? The bottom left image. Let's see who answers it first. The bottom left image. Have anybody recognized what car it is? Okay. Generally, when we say an autonomous, an autonomous driving car, we think of it as a Tesla. Yes, Tesla is one of the leaders of AI in the world. They do so many things. Apart from their self-driving cars, they develop so many things. It's called as OpenAI. After the session, you can just go to Google and have a look about what they do. All right. Then Honda Asimo, one of the oldest robots. 
which uses AI. So many years ago, they developed an intelligent robot. And one of the latest applications is Amazon Go. One of the interesting application to be even more specific. Now let us see what is Amazon Go and we'll come back to the session. Just a second, let me load the video up for you. All right, thank you. Four years ago, we started to wonder, what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. Awesome, right? You just walk into a store, grab your item, and walk out. Automatically, the AI will know what you have taken and it is going to add it in your virtual cart. Now, what were the three main technologies sh shown at the end? Just type it in the chat box. Let's see who's got it. How does the Amazon Go work? What were the three main technologies? If you have seen it in the video at the last, kindly type it so that we learn. Okay, then one says deep learning, deep learning then. Sensor vision, okay, with the one has got it. Okay, sensor fusion, deep learning, computer vision, great. Arnapi has got it. Good, good, good. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. Very good. You're all so attentive. Great. All right. Nice. Most of us, most of us have got it. Great. Okay. So we have seen some of the applications of AI. There's a lot more of it, trust me guys. There is so much of it. Now, coming to this era, what does the term Apple actually mean? Just type in the chat box so that I can take a look. What does Apple mean in this era? Okay, Darshini says Apple iPhone. Esbali ji says fruit. Logo, phone, iPhone, red color. Okay, okay, we got all interesting answers. But thank you so much, Balaji. An apple is still an apple. All right. Fine. Likewise, you said Apple iPhone, iPhone's logo, the Apple company. We have an Apple logo. What is this? It's a green apple. And what is this? You'll be so tempted to say as a red apple. Isn't it? <laughs> but it's not a red apple, it's just an apple. Am I right? <laughs> Funny how our brain works. Now, how are we identifying that, okay, this is an apple, this is a green apple, and this is a logo? How are we actually identifying it? Based on its physical traits. This one, it is shape is like this. But this logo, it is shape is different. Not only the shape, all of the three colors are different, red, green, and gray. Is there anything else apart from this? 
yes the texture is also very important this has slightly dotted texture this has like a bleached texture and this has some kind of a gradient yes these three features can also be seen by the machine so it can identify what is what now we just saw that the machine sees an image as numbers we saw a live example we saw the handwritten number four as the numbers that's how the machine sees it and once again it is like this if we run some kind of machine learning and learn from it we might get something like this some kind of numbers. now some of them might represent the color some of them might represent the shape and some of them might represent its texture but that feature entirely depends upon the algorithm it is using so basically how to identify something using machine learning we need to extract the features from the image we need to extract the features majorly color texture and shape then we can do the machine learning algorithm so oh, there are so many feature extraction techniques and here are some of them you can look them in detail afterwards now let me ask you a question ladies and gentlemen see the image on the left it is a sheep we're going to take a machine okay we're going to take a brand new machine it doesn't know anything at all we're going to tell that we're going to show this image to the machine and we're going to teach that this is a sheep okay we're going to give the image on the left to a brand new machine it does not know anything at all we're going to give this image and we're going to tell that that this is a sheep after it has finished learning we're going to pass on the image on the right we are going to ask whether it's a sheep or not after the machine has learnt this image, we are going to give the image on the right and we are going to ask whether this is a sheep or not. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just kind, kindly tell your answer. Is it going to say yes or no? If it says yes, it is going to tell that this image is a sheep. If it says no, it is going to tell that this image is not a sheep. What do you think? Kindly use the chat box to let us know. Okay, RNRP says yes. We got a lot of no. And we got a few yes. A lots of no, actually. Now equal, yes, yes, yes. No, all right. So it's like 50 50. Some of us said yes, some of us said no. So what is yes? When we pass this image, the machine says that this is a sheep. That that what that is what yes means. If it says no, that means this image is not a sheep. But you know what will actually happen? Like most of you guys guessed, yes, the machine will think that this is a sheep. You know why? It is because we have so much of green in both of the images. So when we pass only one image, the image on the left, majorly it has got green. So the machine will think that, okay, any image that has lots of green, that is going to be a sheep. And that's what happened with the dog. So to avoid this, what should we do? We need to give it more number of images. More number of images in different backgrounds, from different viewpoints, from and in different scales. What do you mean by scale variation? Different sizes, small dog, bigger dog. Same dog, zoomed in and zoomed out. Then occlusions is one of the major challenge, but we will not give them majorly for learning. Let's stay low on this path. Next, illumination. Oh my God, this is one of the major challenges. Same image is on the left and on the right. If you see the pixel values, it is closer to white. And if you see the pixel values on the right, it is closer to gray or black. So the same image, the pixel values are so different. Since the machine can see only the numbers, if the numbers are so different, it might even think that they both are different objects. So illumination is one of the major challenges. And then finally, we need to show them the different classes. Basically all of them are chairs, but all of them look entirely different. So to do a proper machine learning algorithm, to teach the mission that, let's say we want to teach it that this is how laptop looks. What we need to do is we need to give it images of all the types of laptop in different illuminations, in different scale variations, from different viewpoints, 
and from different backgrounds. If we give all these, the machine will be able to kind of extract the correct features and do an accurate representation. All right. Coming back to machine learning. Okay, coming back to machine learning, here are the categories. We have supervised learning, we have unsupervised learning, ignore the semi-supervised learning. We have the reinforcement learning. So what is basically supervised learning? Somebody is teasing someone. Basically, we have cats and we have dogs. And these are all the features of the image. Instead of me explaining you from this table, let me show you a live example. So, most of you might have been wondering why do we have a cat image randomly, am I right? So, we got cats in this folder. Images of different cats in different backgrounds, in different colors, and basically uh, whatever we had seen on the slide, the challenges. Then we have dog images, different, different dogs. Cheers, even I am a pet lover if you are. Then we have pandas. They're also great creatures. <laughs> you can just uh, take a look at them afterwards when you're free. So we have images of cat, dog, and panda. How many images do I have here? Thousand images of each. Okay. What we need to know is in one folder, we have all the cat images and in the next one we have dog images and in the next one we have the panda images. We have some kind of code over here. Let us run that code. And see, okay, I had done something. Okay, yeah, by mistake I had deleted a bracket. <laughs> Okay, so the mission is learning. All the thousand images have been loaded for cat, dog, and panda. And now the mission is learning. This is how a cat looks. This is how a dog looks. This is how a panda looks. So basically what we have done is we have passed the images and we have also passed the label. What is the label? The folder name in our case. So whatever is in the cat folder is called as a cat. We have labeled it. Whatever images are in the dog folder, they're called as dogs. We have labeled it. So finally, the machine has learned, and we also have some samples over here. The image, what we are seeing is a dog, that is a sample. This is a test image given to the machine. So after we give this image to the machine, it is identifying that it is a dog, that I go on the top. The machine is identifying that it is a dog. It is not just us posting uh, some uh, random text over here. We are not telling that there's a dog. The machine analyzes this image. It sees it, understands, and then it is guessing that it is a dog. We have like six random tests over here. We have a dog. Look at this. It has got the cat, right? It has got another dog. Wow, it's a panda. No mistake so far. Once again, a panda, and the last image is also a panda. Randomly, we took six images and gave, it, gave the mission to test it, and it got right. Not only that, we had used something called as a random forest machine learning algorithm for this. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. And its accuracy was 100%. No mistakes at all for this data set. That is really great. 100% achieving it is like a very big thing in machine learning or deep learning, whatever it is. But yeah, uh, we were able to do it because of so many other reasons. Okay, so this is how is basically a machine learning done. One, one small example of machine learning uh, is this one. With machine learning, we can do lots, guys. You can even predict the stock market and all <laughs> if you're into that kind of financial stuff. Now, OK, uh, so this is what is supervised learning. We gave something to the machine. We gave some data. We explained what the data is. We labeled them. We gave cat images. We told them this is how cats look. These are cats. I'm sorry. That is supervised learning. Now, let me tell you what is unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, we have labels, right? We have images and we have labels. But in unsupervised learning, we do not have the labels. So how would you imagine unsupervised learning? Imagine like this. In one folder, 
you have all the mixed photos. Let's say you're a wildlife photographer. You went to the forest, you took so many pictures of snakes, uh, lion, tiger, elephant, whatnot, different, different animals and birds. Let's say you've got images of all of them. There are like 25,000 images, but you want to manually, but you want to sort all of them into different, different folders. Can you do them manually in like one or two hours? That is not possible. But if you write a piece of code in like 30 minutes or an hour, if you sit and write it, you can actually do that stuff. The mission is going to analyze whatever features it can see. What do you mean by features? We say that a cat has uh, pointy ears, very round eyes, fluffy tail, small form factor, uh, and so on. Like that, these are the features that we see. But the mission on its vision, on whatever it can see, the numbers, it will find some kind of features and pattern, and then it will be able to segregate all the different animals. Let's say all. Of, let's say most of the cats look alike. So the machine will see. Okay, these features look alike. Let us combine them and let us put them in a folder. Snakes. They look like this. They have different features. Let us combine them and let them. Let us put them in a folder. So that's how basically unsupervised learning works. Supervised learning. We give. Uh, images as well as labels unsupervised learning we just give some kind of data and it will be able to classify on its own it will segregate it for us now semi-supervised learning let's say part of the work is done but you need to teach the machine something this is how a cat looks this is how a dog looks and so on whatever you know we're going to teach it that is uh, supervised right if we have already labeled them we can teach them that this is how this looks then unsupervised, we can ask the machine to classify it for us. So a combination of uh, supervised and unsupervised learning is semi-supervised learning. Do we use this a lot in real life? Mm, probably depends upon the application. All right. Then finally, reinforcement learning. One of the highest forms of machine learning. Personally, one of my favorite. You know, to <laughs> uh, instead of seeing an image like this over here, let us watch a video and let us come back. Okay, uh, Bhavi Gita is the winner for the treasure hunt. She has found it first. Look at this treasure chest with gold. <laughs> so we have got Bhavi Gita as the winner of treasure hunt. Congratulations. But don't worry, guys, we have one more competition left up. All right. Now let us watch a small video of reinforcement learning and we will get back. It's for a short video, but it is extremely interesting uh, for me at least. I hope it will be interesting for you. So let us watch this. On Earth, the simple rules of natural selection and competition led to the evolution of increasingly intelligent life forms. Today, we ask if comparably simple rules and multi-agent <coughs> competition can also lead to intelligent behavior in a new virtual world. These agents are playing hide and seek. These agents have just begun learning, but they've already learned to chase and run away. This is a hard world for a hider who has only learned to flee. However, after training in millions of rounds of hide and seek, the hiders find a solution. The hiders learn to use rudimentary tools to their advantage. By grabbing and locking these blocks, they can create their own shelter. The seekers are locked in place for a brief period at the start of the game, giving hiders a chance to prepare. Even so, the hiders must learn to collaborate, accomplishing tasks that would be impossible for any single individual. The hiders are not the only ones who can learn to use tools. After many generations of failing to break into the shelter, the seekers learn to jump over obstacles using ramps. However, after many millions of rounds of having their shelter breached, the hiders learn to take away the primary tool the seekers have at their disposal. All right, let me just interrupt here for a moment. So basically we have two sets of reinforcement learning 
are running over here. What two sets of reinforcement learning? Yes, we got the hiders, the blue one, and the seekers or the catchers, like we call uh, generally. <coughs> I'm sorry. If the hiders they escape from the seekers, they get maximum rewards. Okay. If the seekers catch the hiders, they get maximum reward. So basically here we have a competition between two reinforcement learning algorithm that it can do anything to get the highest reward. It is trying to get the highest reward. It is learning everything. So basically how we do is uh, we create some kind of environment. We give this objects and we let the AI play. So basically the AI will have certain inputs, the visual inputs. Uh, it can do some physical movements forward, back, left, right, grab and uh, release it. So like it will have some physical movements. So the AI has control, the input it takes is physical, sorry, the input it takes is some kind of vision data and it has some controls to work with. So basically we create the environment, give the objects and we just leave the AI. The aim of the AI will be to get the highest reward. So whoever wins the round, they get the highest reward and that's how it is trained. So here are some interesting uh, applications, just watch. Note that we did not explicitly incentivize any of these behaviors. As each team learns a new skill, it implicitly changes the challenges the other team faces, creating a new pressure to adapt. We also put these agents into a more open-ended environment, randomizing the objects, team sizes and walls. In this world, they learn to construct their own shelter from scratch, requiring that they arrange multiple objects into precise structures. To prevent seekers from using the ramps, the hiders move them to the edge of the play area and lock them in place. We originally believed this would be the final strategy that the agents learn. However, we found that after more training, the seekers discover that they can jump on top of boxes and surf them to the hider's shelter. see basically they have a small glitch in the game there a small physics glitch yes even games have physics so they have a small physics glitch and the ai learned to exploit it it can even do that yeah. now imagine what will happen if ai just comes into hacking <laughs> what will happen will we all be safe that's a question for you to answer the last stage of emergent strategy that we observe the high learn to lock as many boxes as they can before constructing their fort in order to defend against box surf so how do agents acquire these skills? They're trained using reinforcement learning, an algorithm inspired by the way animals on Earth learn. The agents play thousands of rounds of hide-and-seek in parallel for many days. They train against each other, as well as past versions of themselves, using an algorithm called self-play. Co-evolution and competition on Earth led to the only generally intelligent species known to date, humans. While this world is far less complex than Earth, we have found evidence that simple rules can lead to increasingly intelligent behavior from multi-agent interaction. We hope that with a much larger and more diverse environment, truly complex and intelligent agents will one day emerge. All right, so we had a very good insight on reinforcement learning. <coughs> I'm sorry. Now. And yeah, to finish up, we have a workflow. Basically what we do is we give the input data, the images or whatever it is, numbers, we get, we give the input data, the feature is being extracted. Then the extracted features are being passed to the machine learning algorithm with the respective labels, the images of the cat, the cat's features. Then what is it? We are calling it a cat that is being passed. This is training. Now, like we saw the machine identify that this is how a dog looks, this is how a cat looks. That is the prediction. So once again, for prediction, we given some kind of input image. Again, the features are being extracted and we have the knowledge, right? The classifier model is basically the knowledge. It will know that this is how a cat looks, this is how a dog will look. That is called as a classifier model, which is trained by the, I mean, which is given by the machine learning algorithm. So when we give our image features to the classifier model, it will basically compare both of them and identify and label what is it, which is, it a, is it a panda, is it a dog, is it a cat and so on. 
finally guys we'll take a look into the neural networks deep learning a small insight all right here we have a data set we have the number four which is handwritten this is a number zero that is handwritten like that we have so many things so many numbers right uh, from zero to nine we have 10 numbers basically the same thing what we achieved with machine learning can be done something using deep learning but it works entirely different you know what will happen if you create an artificial brain in your system yes we are what will happen if you kind of create a smaller artificial brain in the computer to learn things how does a human learn does it learn by numbers no it does not so people try to so scientists try to develop an artificial brain into the computers because both the basic building blocks of the brain that is neurons as well as the building blocks of a processor that is what is it transistor both of them work with electricity and both of them can either pass electricity or not binary value zero or one <coughs> sorry so based on that people try to create an artificial brain and let's take a look of it right now the same thing if it is done by neural networks just hold on let me share the slide with you okay So these are all the handwritten text, number three, number one, whatever it is. When the image is passed, all of these are artificial neurons. Just a smaller brain in the computer. And when it is the image two, finally it says that it is a number two. Look at that. Wow, right? The same image recognition that is done by an artificial brain. Yes, that is what is deep learning. If you have heard the term neural networks, yes, that is deep learning. Neural networks are not different. Deep learning is not different. What is this? It's a neural network. It's a small artificial brain. That is so cool, right? And we have different uh, forms in it. Look at this, that was a single layer one. This is a multi-layer one. We call this a CNN, convolutional neural networks. Then finally, a spiking network. If you see the brain's activity in some kind of a scan, it will be spiking, it will not be constant. They are trying to replicate this one, like this. Yes, and there we go. That is how neural networks work. So, so far, what have we, uh, what have we covered in this session? We saw what are the types of AI. We cleared most of the misconceptions about AI, machine learning, and deep learning, and I believe gave you a good insight about it. In machine learning, what are the three major categories? First one is supervised learning, next unsupervised learning, and finally, reinforcement learning. These are the three major categories. Then what is deep learning? Basically trying to create an artificial brain in your computer. That is deep learning. That is neural networks. Now, the first uh, event, treasure hunt, was over. Now, ladies and gentlemen, are you all ready for the second event? If yes, type yes in your chat box. Now, all of us are going to play together a game. Do you want to play it? If yes, just type S in your chat box <clears throat> all right we are going to play the game 
fine just a second let me just load the game for you guys and uh, let me tell you what it is classic yes we are here we're going to play a game like ningle villa mar godi or croka teka crown bari whatever it is it is a mcq game okay uh, we you'll be given a question in the screen in this screen that is being presented you'll be given a question and four answers you need to choose the right option from your device okay so out of all of those people we are playing in this session let us see who is the winner okay how will you become a winner let me tell you that but before that to join this game all you need to do is go to www.kahoot.it if you are on your laptop kindly take your mobile phone to use it or you can use a new tab but you need to switch back and forth if you're using your mobile you need to watch i mean whatever it is laptop or mobile you need to watch the questions and answer from this screen and then choose the right option from your own device okay so go to kahoot.it either in your mobile phone or in your laptop and enter the game pin after you enter the game pin you need to uh, enter your name so that it will be visible on the screen over here just like maha and ai kindly use your original name so that if you are the winner then we can give the correct prize to you if it is some kind of name and we are not able to find it you are going to be uh, at stake all right so how will you win this game basically <clears throat> yes like you guessed you need to give the correct answer but there are so many people many of them might give the correct answer how will we know who is the winner hmm in this game the fastest finger wins the fastest finger who give, who gives the right answer wins so out of all of those people you need to give the right answer obviously but who gives the answer the fastest gets the highest point the next person who gives the right answer gets a slightly lower point and like that it will go on okay so your scores will be added together after each question at the end whoever has the highest score wins all right let me give you 2 minutes it is uh, 6:11 now let us wait until 6:13 so that all of us can join and we'll get back to you shortly thank you ladies and gentlemen All right, ladies and gentlemen, kindly hurry up. We're going to start the session in just two minutes. The quiz will start in two more minutes. So kindly hurry up if you're trying to log in. Yeah, we'll meet you.
Is there anyone else trying to join or shall we start the session? If you're trying to join, just kindly let us know in the chat box so that we'll give you a minute. Okay, we got Moon Moon. All right, as per your request, let us start the quiz. So once again, let me tell you what it is. You got a question and four answers. You need to choose the right option from your device. By the end of first question, you would have got oriented. So we're going to start the quiz in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Buckle up. It's a multi select option. On the top, you have the question, and in the bottom, you have the answers. For this question, choose all the right answers. There is more than one option that is correct. All right. So basically, all four of them use AI. YouTube, it does a lot of browsing. Just find out what it does. IBM Watson, they're one of the leaders of AI. They provide a lot of AI services. Tesla, Atram is driving cars. Without AI, how is it possible? And Google, one of the search engines, <laughs> they're also one of the leaders of AI. Google owns YouTube, right? All right, let us see who has got the highest score in the first question. And that is to the congratulations. That's, I believe all of you would have got oriented in the first question. We've got five more questions left. All the best. Get ready for the next question now. What is concerns basically? Manasachi, right? Does AA have Manasachi? Does AA have gut feeling? Does it know what is right and wrong without telling to it? No, it does not. At the moment, it does not have concerns. And I don't think it will come in the near future. I think the sixth sense, the concerns is only for humans. That is my personal belief with based on the experience that I have on AI so far. All right. No changes to that. Still got the right answer. She's on the top. And Muthu has climbed up to 28 places. Oh, that's great in one question. Moving on to the next question now. All right, very good. Majority of us have chosen the concentrated learning. Basically, machine learning, reinforcement learning, deep learning, we have seen it. Have we seen something called as concentrated learning? No, it is not. So that is the odd one out. Okay, Maha has got last three answers correct. Great. Climbed up to the fourth place and is on fire. We're going to go to the next question now. Okay, basically, does the computer can make decisions like us? Obviously, no. 
do we need thousand images to learn that this is a cat this is how a bottle looks this is how a stupid banana looks i'm sorry i could not call i mean this is how a banana looks no we do not need thousand images we can see one or two bananas and we will remember it for life that this is how a banana looks therefore it does not make decisions like humans all learn like humans no it does not so just now you said that we are trying to create an artificial brain inside the computer when you are saying it is not like humans yeah we were creating some kind of artificial brain but does it have the functionality of the humans a human brain has got billions of neurons what we saw was just you know uh, a few thousands of neurons over there and basically even top scientists and the top doctors does not know how a human brain works it is so complex it's so beautiful that's one of the greatest creations ever trying to replicate it in a computer right now i don't think that is a possible but ai was started with the objective with this objective to make the computers learn and make decisions like human to reduce the human effort that was the objective it was started with all right now nsk has got the right answer and even deep has climbed 25 places that is great moving on leaded by suda next question now okay Elon Musk one of the world leaders of artificial intelligence even the hide and seek which we were seen by open ai that is by elon musk or right? that is by in his company now he is the one saying that ai can be more intelligent than all of the humans if you have been following him recently you would know that okay uh, do i believe this no comments i like to keep quiet right going on to the next question before there are any changes okay so that's got the right answer again and kritika has climbed up to 33 places and is the highest climber wow that is great now next question now the last question all right that is very good performance guys we saw uh, examples of computer vision image recognition and in the beginning we saw that robotics use ai we talked about voice recognition but did we talk about web design no we did not that is good uh, very good guys so we are going to go to the prize distribution but before that can all of us kind of unmute and clap during the prize distribution yes just unmute yourself and clap for the winners Third place goes to Shabana. Second place, Prince Jada. Jada, right from the first question, she's been leading the top. Congratulations. Okay, that's it. Okay, everybody, now we can go and do your best. Two winners of these two competitions, Tasha Hunt. and uh, the quiz so that has got the prize for the quiz so uh, that is great all right and if you have any other doubts so if you do have can you post it in the chat box and we can clear it out before i hand over the session to sound and sir okay okay uh, okay difference between machine learning and deep learning asked by arna p so basically machine learning learns using a complex algebraic expression it uses arithmetic it uses some kind of numbers but then deep learning is trying to create 
an artificial brain it started like that but it is not entirely an artificial brain that is so much that's like a c but what you need to understand is uh machine learning is basically using complex some kind of equations some kind of arithmetic equations some algebra and so on but deep learning on the other hand split the complex work into simpler stuff and do it all right any more questions how to start learning python okay you're from ec branch no problem uh, rahul sir savan sir is going to guide you on that even if people are from mechanical even if people have never seen coding in their entire life we're going to tell you how to learn that what is the latest algorithm in cnn cnn is basically like a filter uh, right convolutional neural networks um that is not like an algorithm that's a filter you can use different filters for different uh, stuff that uh, entirely depends just kind of uh, google about inception google about vgg16 and then you will know uh, more details on that all right just keep in mind about vgg16 and inception v3 so that is good is language plays vital role in ai yes we need uh, a language to program ai right so we basically use python because that is very simple and short now what software we used to learn uh, machine learning uh, basically we should know that we are using python we are going to code the ai from scratch so ann and cnn difference probably wants to know different ann is artificial neural networks so what we saw in the video of uh, you know discriminating the letters from each other we had some kind of Uh, a small physical brain behind uh, uh, the image right so that is artificial neural networks cnn is just a part of artificial neural networks convolutional neural networks are kind of filters okay so google lens translation uses ai of course google lens is ai supervised semi supervised ml is a combination of uh, supervised and unsupervised learning whatever we know if you know the labels we are going to train it with supervised learning if you do not know the labels we are going to give it to the unsupervised so that it's going to split out for us so machine learning and robotics we can teach the robotics we can use machine learning uh, to do it uh, basically let me give you an example uh, we have something called as palletization you have the finished goods you need to load it onto a tray so that that can be loaded onto the trucks okay we have finished goods and we need to load it onto the tray the robot needs to load that how to load that in what kind of uh, permutation and combination we can load that that is done by the ai one of the small examples it can do automatic uh, assembly and so on right that is ai used in robotics can we apply ai in 5g uh, the way i see 5g is like just a medium to transfer right uh, 5g the way i see is 5g is just like a pipe in which the data water can flow can we use ai in it if you are able to come up then you might be the next billionaire who knows rahul getam then support vector machine that is one of the algorithms in machine learning uh, basically to give you in short support vector machine whatever kind of data you are giving to it it goes into the next dimension and it will learn Okay, more details on that in our machine learning session. All right, we will show you the recording. No problem. In CNN, which algorithm is best? That entirely depends upon the data set. Some da some algorithms are best for you know electronics. Some algorithms are best for wildlife. That entirely depends. Basically, CNN is a filter. What do you want to filter? We are going to uh, create a separate CNN for that. Uh, next. feedback link yes you are going to get it no problem so any more final doubts ladies and gentlemen future of ai wow okay basically ai has been growing like anything so far let me share you two slides okay just two slides uh good that you asked i actually stop before that see the revenue has been exponentially growing so far and it is expected to grow again <laughs> you know what the funny thing even this graph is predicted by machine learning that is fun right <coughs> sorry until 2025 we have a small prediction and that is still exponential even this graph is created by machine learning now basically this is the future at the moment embedded ai physical 
and software so agriculture automobile military medical bionics and so far so this is the future um yeah how a can be used to make your life happy <laughs> um basically it depends each people have different happiness uh so it can be done differently for some people uh reducing so much of work from their life like taking the dog out uh, to do something going to the groceries if you are able to reduce that that is going to make the people's life happy okay i don't want to go to other parts of that sites to learn ml for projects yeah we are going to share that in just a minute sound and so is going to tell you about that oh hey we will learn to happy life okay okay thank you munmun technology development to reduce manpower yeah great so yes let me hand over the mic to saunan sir is going to give you something that is going to be highly worthy saunan sir handing over the mic to you thank you so much ladies and gentlemen thank you so much uh, to db jain college for organizing this wonderful workshop all of you are very cooperative interactive and i'm really happy to find such uh, you know faculty is trying to learn more faculty is trying to de develop yourselves even in the holidays thank you so much thank you so much saran sir passing over the mic to you hope you are listening thank you uh hi all thank you for being a part of this wonderful session and uh, it has been a great pleasure you know sharing the information about ai to you all and thanks to division college and uh, uh, thank you jagdeep sir for putting this together and helping us you know uh, get the session done and while on the same note uh, Uh, friends we are also on uh, we have a responsibility uh, to share the latest technology to all, you know all the students so we have come up with a 7 days challenge on artificial intelligence and as a tribute to abdul kalam sir we have started something called as eight on 2020 uh, where uh, students can learn artificial intelligence in just 7 days yeah so this is uh, i hope you can see my screen uh, you can visit eight on 2020.com um, so in this lockdown uh, uh, just the world the world itself has come to an you know, hold for us to upgrade ourselves so if you are looking to change your profile if you are looking to change your uh, you know a lifestyle or if you are looking to get into a new domain this is the you know right platform so what i would request you to do is kindly you know uh, log on to this uh, aton2020.com so where you can see a syllabus uh, which is 7 days uh, syllabus click on this uh you can get into the portal and you can learn artificial intelligence in just 7 days so we are giving this to students and faculty for just it says 3000 rupees but uh, students and faculty can apply a code uh, challenge and they can get this entire course for 200 rupees that's it and we also have a community where we share a lot of project where the students themselves will be able to you know uh, you know uh, gain knowledge on artificial intelligence and they will also be a part of this guinness book of record uh, and also you know uh, they will also get a certification on the course completion so i will share the code to you allen this is the code if they apply this code they will get uh, uh, you know uh, uh, 95% job for this is only for students and faculties so kindly encourage your students and you know to go ahead and do this there are a lot of students who are doing this right now uh, so it is all a pre recorded courses as soon as they sign in they will the courses will start immediately each day a content will be released and they can just learn and they can just you know uh, you know update themselves yeah and uh, not only that every week we have a community meeting where we'll be sharing lot of projects like uh, you know uh, facial recognition uh, you know mask uh, detection and we also have drowsiness alert so all those codings and everything will be shared and will be discussed in that community meeting so we want to make this big so kindly support our initiative and this funding is used for uh, helping startups and also to set up a robotics lab in government school so everyone completely forgot about this vision 2020 and right now vision 20 is taking a big toll on us a uh, successful movement at least we thought this will be something on a positive side uh, to remember 2020 uh, all about yeah and if any of the faculties you want us to conduct a session in your colleges or you know to uh, uh, any community you are okay to do this so kindly you can get in touch with us uh, and definitely we are looking forward to join with you and reach more people on artificial intelligence thank you all for your time i don't want to take much of your time so i just want to quickly share this i'll share this link also where you can see uh, course syllabus and everything on it okay thank you thank you all thank you very much uh, sir uh, and sir so many people want to learn python also so if you can just show them how to yes. access that in the same site will be useful thank you 
yeah i will show you that you can just log on to our uh, uh, this is our online digital portal so you can just log on to this portal I'll, i will show you uh, how to access that if you i'll share the link on the chat box if you log on to it uh, we have uh, various other courses as well uh, like python uh, java uh, so you can choose whatever you want to uh, you know learn you can choose the portal you want all you have to do is just come down and you can just select uh, you know whatever the courses you want and you can you can apply a code called as fsts 90 uh, i will share the code to you so that fsts if you use fsts 90 you get the course at 90 percentage off as well uh, sorry my system just got uh, stuck okay i hope you are able to see this okay so we have machine learning uh, you know top entry questions create a game we have everything in it uh uh i am so sorry i just got cut off uh, unfortunately okay i hope uh, you guys are uh, seeing that uh, link I'll uh, reshare the uh, link for you. So this is the one we have all the various courses. Uh, all you have to do is just choose whatever you need. Just come in and then just type in. Uh, uh, I'll ch- share it in the comment box. It's FSTS ninety, and uh, for students and faculty, you get at ninety percentage off. Okay, so uh, kindly re- encourage the students to go on with artificial intelligence because next five to ten years. the one job which you can do by staying at home is artificial intelligence and python is the backbone for it trust me in 20 years the, li- the life will be changing for everyone so i hope this uh, this session has given you an insight about artificial intelligence i hope to see you all in another occasion and thank you thank you everyone for this uh, time thank you everyone uh, jagdeep sir you can uh, take over the session sir yes thanks sir ronan for your wonderful coordination and as well as a special thanks to our uh, speaker sinivas for your such a wonderful uh, speech informative session uh, i invite uh, professor varadi yening puri from the participant side a very good evening to all who are present here uh, sir mr sinivas rahman you have indeed made a wonderful interactive session on artificial intelligence emphasizing about its magical revolution So we are having some only one or two queries. We it won't take much of your time. Can I, sir? Sinivas, sir. Sure, ma'am. Kindly shoot your questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, one only one. An artificial intelligent epidemiologist sent the first alert of the coronavirus. Is it true? And have any idea about this, sir? Yes, I did also uh, take a look at the news. Actually, it is possible. Uh, basically, virus strains. We have different strains of the virus that uh, viruses are there, over, right? So what we can do is we can encode each of the strain of the virus, and then we can feed it to some kind of machine learning or deep learning to find out what other possible combinations of and permutations can be done. And that permutations, the output that we are getting, that can be simulated to find out whether that virus can exist. 
So if you reverse engineer this, we can get the medicine. It is possible, but yeah, I'm still skeptical about it. We don't have uh, you know uh, more info on that. That was slightly kept secret. So what they'll do is basically they'll do more research on this, get the patent, and then they will re release all the vital information so that we can give you more information on that. Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? Sir, only one more, please. Yes. Uh, and they are using some algorithm to find the face recognition in Facebook. And do you are having any idea about which algorithm they are using? OK. So even we are doing uh, face recognition. Basically, to recognize something, we saw cats, dogs, and pandas, right? The same thing. The, we can use our own faces. So basically, what we did was we took so many images of cats, so many images of dogs and pandas, stored it, and we taught the machine how to do that. We use something called as decision tree. Sorry, we use something called as random forest, like that. What Facebook does is we upload our own photos in Facebook, right? So what it will do is it will take that as the training data, and it will be able to recognize us all over. Basically, Facebook doesn't use just one algorithm. It uses a combination of them. For some people, for some kind of faces, some algorithms might work. For others, it might not work. So it is basically a trail and error. We, it has another kind of AI <laughs> that runs different AI to find out different faces. <laughs> it's like uh, the movie Inception, right? Uh, going into a dream, into one another, like that. One AI runs each other. It's a very highly complex system. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Any more thank questions? you, sir. Thank you for such a detailed answer. It was really a very extremely informative and valuable session. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Jagdish. Thank you, Sunday. Thanks, Baradi. Now I invite uh, Professor Prabhagaran to deliver the vote of thanks. Prabhagaran, sir. Yeah, thank you, Bija, sir. Uh, good evening, one and all. I deem it a great honor to propose the vote of thanks to all who have helped us in making this webinar such a resounding success. On behalf of the Computer Science Department, Tamdaj Bay Jain College, I extend my profound gratitude to our management trust members, President Sri Dayachan Sonsuka, Secretary of Administration, Dr. Haris L. Mehta, Secretary of Academic and Finance, Sri Jaswal Munoth, for their constant support during tenure of the webinar. My heartfelt thanks to our chief guest, Mr. Srinivasa Raghavan, for gracing today's webinar. It is really fantastic presentations with real-time illustrations. Your presentation was insightful and informative to the delightful of the participants. My sincere thanks to our principal, Dr. Sandil Raj, Professor in charge, Dr. M. Sakthil Murugan, Head of the Computer Science PG Department, Dr. S. Balaji, Head of Computer Science UG Department, Dr. B. Jagdishan, for their moral support and the guidance in our organization this webinar. Thanks to all participants who have joined with us and made this webinar a grand success. Also, I thank the organization team of Computer Science faculties for coordination, conduct, and smooth execution of this webinar. Once again, thank you, one and all. Dear participants, you will receive the e-certificate within three days after submission of feedback form. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhupada, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. So I request all the participants to please fill up the feedback form. After filling the feedback form, you will get the e-certificate within three days. Thank you, Jagdishan, sir. Thank you.